Thank you for coming to hear my story about education. As she said, I'm Glenetta Turner Pope. I'm a mother of four children, ages 12, 10, 8, and 5. Before I became a mom, I became the 10th child in a family of 12. And ironically, I'm the only one to attend college and eventually earn three degrees. However, early on, I learned real quick that it wasn't because I was so much smarter than, smarter than my 11 brothers and sisters, but the difference between their educational journey and mine was simply opportunity. While I was born in Los Angeles, I was actually raised in East Oakland. And if anybody in the room knows about East Oakland, it's very similar to South Central LA. Growing up in the 80s, hearing gunshots on a regular basis and wondering who had gotten killed the night before was simply a common occurrence. I ended up attending all public schools, K-12. Out of 400 of us who started as freshmen in high school, only about 120 actually completed. And of that number, very few went to colleges or universities. In fact, for my last count, it was only about 30. So I knew right away that something had to be done about education. Later on in life, I matriculated right after high school. I went to UC Berkeley. And as you can imagine, these are two different worlds. As I walked onto the campus day after day for the first month or so, I was so uncomfortable. In fact, I was so uncomfortable to the point that I called my mom one day, and I just had to let her know, Mom, I've made a huge mistake. I should have never chosen UC Berkeley as my undergraduate. In fact, I put in applications to be received from Harvard, Spelman, Hampton, Xavier, all historically black colleges and universities, because I have to get out of here. In this space, I feel inferior. Well, in East Oakland, I was one of the top students. In this environment, I feel as if I'm one of the lowest. Of course, my mom cut me off at about 10 minutes into the conversation. And she let me know real clearly, you are not going anywhere. In fact, get off this phone, stop playing, figure out what you need to do to catch up, figure out what's being taught now, learn it, master it, and graduate. Because if you don't learn how to deal with people from other cultures now, you'll never learn how to do it. You see, the main thing I told my mom about going to UC Berkeley is that it was just too hard and too white. How was I going to survive? After I got off the phone with her, although she kind of ticked me off just a little bit, I figured she was kind of right. So shortly after that conversation with my mother, I was on a plane coming from Phoenix. And as we were descending into Oakland, I was sitting there reading one of my favorite books by J. California Cooper. And I was so involved in this novel. And all of a sudden, I heard two gentlemen talking in front of me. One said to the other, this area right here, we call that the Silicon Valley. That's where people are intelligent. They create new things. It's the hub of technology. This area right here is Hayward. Cal State Hayward is there. But that area right there is East Oakland. And nothing good comes from there. Did you hear me say earlier that I'm from East Oakland? My blood was boiling. Instinctually, I wanted to pop him upside the head, or at least go in front of him and straight face to face and let him know that he was offending my city. How could you say nothing good comes from East Oakland when that is my home? That's where all my family still lives and the place that I consider to be my home now and forever. 
Yes, there's a few knuckleheads who do things to destroy the reputation, but there are still good people there. Considering the fact that back then I had a little bit of a temper and I did not trust myself to actually remain calm and have a civil conversation, I chose to remain seated. But something happened in that moment. First of all, I was just overcome with sadness because here it was, this one person who represented hundreds of thousands of people who felt that nothing good would ever come out of my community. But not only that, I was overcome with just a, a huge burden to know that everything that I was doing from this point forward was not just for me. It wasn't about me getting a degree and moving on, but I was doing it for everybody in my community and my family. It was serious. So eventually I made it out of Berkeley, matriculated to the Harvard Graduate School of Education. Night before the first class, I'm having that moment again. The sinking feeling, I'm one of those people, I feel it in the pit of my stomach, and I'm thinking it's going to be the same situation it was freshman year every day. So once again, who do I call? Mom. Mom, you know this place is even harder than UC Berkeley. In fact, I had to tell my mom repeatedly that it was Harvard and not Howard, because she wanted to tell everybody I was going to Howard. But when she finally grasped it's actually Harvard and it's in Cambridge, it's not in Washington, D.C., and I was talking to her on the phone and just telling her, this is a different, this is even more intense. Once again, she checked me. Glenetta, why are you doubting yourself? You made it out of UC Berkeley. Of course, I received her words, but also felt like I needed to do something. So I took that entire night reading all of the articles for that particular class, taking notes, making sure that if someone called on me, I was ready. After not getting rest that night, woke up, got up the next morning, got myself together, put on my Sunday's best, went to class. The professor began talking about whatever the articles were on. Classmates were chiming in. And for the first time in my educational career, I sat there and I said, finally, I can join in on this conversation with confidence. Finally, the playing field had been leveled. But why did it take so long for the playing field to be leveled? Here I was now a graduate student. And it really just bothered me because I couldn't figure out why my classmates in undergrad seemed better equipped than I did. But now as I made the transfer from undergrad to graduate, I was ready. But the question I continuously ask, even to this day as someone who's worked in schools in all different types of areas, is why hasn't the playing field been leveled? Why is it okay for schools in urban areas especially to constantly produce students who don't have the educational tools to survive or to thrive. How many of you out there would take yourself or your child to a hospital that you know has a reputation for killing people? We probably wouldn't do that. To me, it's just as serious as schools that are killing dreams that kids come in with on day one, being told they can't do something. They won't do something. So choose something that's a little bit more safe. This is unacceptable. It's a 911 situation. So every day I ask myself, what can we do? Not just me, because obviously it's bigger than me. The great philosopher and civil rights activist W.B. Du Bois had a theory called the Talented Tenth. In this theory, he envisioned that the 10%, the top 10% of the African-American community would actually grab hands of the other 90% and make sure they had the right education and was able to thrive. Now, in 2015, it's all of our responsibility, whether black, white, brown, yellow, even purple for that matter. We must grab the hands 
of the children in the schools through putting pressure on schools and districts that are consistently and sometimes purposely not preparing students for a solid education. We also have to make sure that we're giving the schools the support that they need. Many of the educators that I've worked with have a sincere concern for what's going on in the field of education. They did not just become a teacher for the fun of it. They became an educator because they care, but they sometimes have limited resources and are bucking up against a system that won't allow them to do what they know is the right thing to do. So just as I want for my children, Jalel, age 12, El Yaquim, age 10, Amina, 8, and Adar, 5, to have a quality education, I want the same for every child in South Central LA, in East LA, in East Oakland, in West Oakland, no matter what some moron on the plane has decided to say. Thank you.